Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope. Today, I am going to have a conversation with Prince in the afterlife. Now, this conversation is timely. It will be added to the playlist for Prince, which you can find here at Above Life Channel. So if you're a Fram, a fan, a Prince follower, adorer, you can find a playlist and binge to your heart's content. All right, today this is timely because I want to talk to him as we are coming up on the three year anniversary of his transition into the afterlife where Prince became full on spirit. And interesting this year, so you're watching this video, you may be watching it at another, at another time, but it's being recorded in April, 2019. And this year, the transition date of Prince into the afterlife is the same day as Easter. So I wanted to chat with Prince about that because I believe as a psychic, as a medium, as one who really connects with the energy of things, the flow of things and works in energy like it's art, like this beautiful co-creative medium that we can use, access and feel for our healing, for our inspiration, all that good stuff. I believe that dates can have significance. They can be like a light, a pin dot on a map, but it's like a light in cosmic consciousness where we can all connect. That might sound like really woohoo or really kind of blow your mind, but that's true. That's just the way it is. And so I want to talk with Prince about that. I just did a channeling <laughs> with him. So I did it for a small group that I've been hosting um, during this time of year, during the spring. I, I have tried to do that for people who just have really had a hard time when Prince left the planet. And now that he's full on spirit, that's how I know him as full on spirit. Even though I live in Minnesota and I've been to Paisley Park, yes, his magical studios, um, I know him so much more as an afterlife spirit, as a spirit friend, as a spirit guide. Just, uh, he's got a wonderful um, vibe to him. He loves to assist people with healing. He really uplifts people who really feel down, people who are dealing with depression, anxiety, addiction. He really loves creative energy and sees it as a healing vibration, as a healing tool. And so, and I believe in that myself as well. Um, that creative being creative is really a healing tool and so uh, let's chat specifically thank you for being here he's already here if you can feel him if you're a psychic and you're watching or if you're intuitive or in tune with energy you can feel him all right so we just chatted a whole bunch so now prince let's talk about it's so weird because i'm not used to you being on this side but you specifically said not this side but this side of the video so can you tell me why that is first he says, I thought you needed a fresh perspective, a fresh look. <laughs> like, okay, thanks. <laughs> when I channel with Prince and I'm in a casual conversation, I use my own words to rephrase or reframe what he is sharing. And what he is sharing, sometimes I hear it in conversation tone, or um, we have an interaction or a connection with clairsentient channel, which is the sensing, feeling, heart space. Just so you guys are aware, that's what's happening. So if you're like, it doesn't sound like Prince, Okay, because I'm Bridget, not Prince, and I'm sharing what Prince says. So when you recount a story that somebody tells you or something that happened that your significant other told you or somebody at work told you or your kid told you, you're going to say it a little differently than how your kid explained it to you, especially if your kid's like five, right? And you're like 30. Okay. Well, that was kind of sassy. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, transparency. This is who I am, you guys. All right. So you wanted me to have a different perspective, a different look at things? Yes, because the different view and looking outside, it's April in Minnesota and we did have a massive snowstorm blizzard like a week ago. He kind of laughs, he goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he la he's laughing, he thinks it's funny, I know. Today is a little bit cloudy, a little bit dreary. I'm looking outside and I do see some evergreen trees. It's beautiful. Thank you for moving over to this side so I can really feel the energy. He says, I want you to know what's possible. That's important. I want you to feel this energy. He says, Bridget, I want you to feel this energy of what's possible here. 
in the springtime as you share, as you channel this for everyone. Okay, you guys, you got it. All right. One of the most important things in connection is feeling the energy. As you watch this video, please give yourself permission to do that, to feel the vibes. Yeah, that felt really good. Thank you. That's such a, it's such a gift. You know, nature really does help us, doesn't it, to tune in and connect. Thank you. You know, as a Minnesotan to Minnesotan, I appreciate that. Because at least it's not snowing outside. At least it's not 30 degrees outside. It might even get up to 50 today. Woo woo! <laughs> you know, I appreciate what you can get, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, so will you chat with us, please, Prince, about, gosh, it's been three years now, three years since you decided to zoop, leave the body and just head out into the cosmic consciousness of the universe and live full on spirit. This weekend, it actually the third year of your spirit life, full on spirit life, is celebrated on Easter. And I know in your human life, you really, really had a connection to Jesus. And I know that in the afterlife because when I've done some private group stuff, when I've done some private programs like my virtual retreat or my spring thing and that kind of thing, you and I have talked about Jesus and you have spoken a lot about, you've helped me to feel that energy connection that you have with Jesus and I appreciate that. Because I've connected with Jesus, I've connected with Jesus myself as well um, many times. Just as you probably as viewers, if if that's your, um, if Jesus is one of your spirit guides or one of the deities that you you like, you don't have to be Christian. By the way, this isn't a religious thing. We're not. Prince and I aren't talking about religion. In his human life, yes, Jehovah's Witness, yes. But in the afterlife, th there is no, there's none of that. Like there's no body, so there's no formal structuring of belief systems to contrast, okay? Everybody, everybody, it's all diverse and beautiful and a tapestry, right? Right, okay. I feel like I have to say that sometimes, you know? Um, but you and I have talked about Jesus and this weekend is very important to people who love Jesus are really connected with Jesus in the afterlife. And I do think that is very special. The connection you have with him in the afterlife. So the fact that three years is Easter and that three, if you're a numerology person, is an ascended number, which means a master number and like a master teacher, like a Jesus or a, a Buddha for example. How's that working for you, Prince, huh? How's that connecting? What do you, how do you feel about that? Like, I want to ask you, was that planned? Is that part of the plan? He's like, hey, I just show up. I go where I'm needed. He says, I go where I'm needed, you know? I just show up. Like in co-creation, you know, I just show up, I show up. I go where I'm needed. So does that mean that you feel like your people need you? Like, do you feel your fans, your fram, your fam? People who, um, if you're not an avid Prince fan, just so you know, the avid Prince fans, the Prince adorers, <laughs> they use the word fam instead of fan because Prince, when he was alive, um, didn't like to use the word fan because it meant like fanatics or crazy. But just because you call somebody a fam and not a fan doesn't mean they're not crazy. Let me just tell you, <laughs> because some of the Prince adorers have a lot of um, intensity and passion and are not afraid to put you in your place. Let me just tell you that, you know, they're, they're the ones you want on your side in a, in a fight, you know, <laughs> they want you want them on your side because they're going to just blah, come to your back, you know. I have learned that, Prince, working with your people. It's been three years now since I've been connected in this energy space. And wow, wow, you know, you cannot change somebody's um, full on committed belief. I mean, if they're committed, this is what this is what it is. And that's they're very purist sometimes, sometimes. Right. But they come in all colors of the rainbow, all different shades of that. Um, 
adoration or admiring or what have you. So are you here for your people? He says, absolutely. He said, I promised them I would be. He said, Bridget, you know, I promised them I would be. I'm not going anywhere. So Prince is not reincarnated. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. From my interpretation and from what he is sharing with me, he's not, he's not reincarnated. He intends to be in the afterlife so that he can connect with you and help you. So how do you work with individuals, Prince? Like right now, this weekend, you know, it's coming up on the third year of your absence from human plane. And there's a lot of people that love you that are still trying to understand. You know, it's like a grief process and, it, and it's hard. And every year on the anniversary of your death, it brings up and stirs up a whole bunch of stuff for people. What, what would you say about that? He says, well, I'm not Jesus. I am going to say that. He says, Bridget, you mentioned Jesus, and I want to make sure I, I humbly acknowledge that. I'm not Jesus. We're different. We're different energy. We're all connected. We're all oneness, but we're, we're different energy. He says, you refer to me often as a healer, and I, I'm humbled by that. And yes, I have committed to a mission here, here after life as a spirit, to fulfill my promises to those who enjoyed my music and my work to continue sharing that connection and now that I cannot make new music, there has to be a way that I can still be here for those who feel as though they need me. Now, people don't need me. People talk themselves into needing things like food or medication or other people. And let me clarify, when I say food, I mean certain kinds of food like I only have to eat vegetables, or I only have to eat certain types of meat, or I need lots of, and he shows me baked goods, like a huge bakery case of donuts, and like, ah, <laughs> because I like me a donut from time to time. So he's kind of like, hey, you don't need any of that. What you need is the connection to your soul, to your spirit. What you need is to remember who you are, really who you are. And in that, then you reach out and you extend and you connect with others and that lifts everybody up. He says, that brings everybody up, he says. But I do feel like, Prince, though, that part of your role is really helping people that are really in a low points or when, when people who loved your work are going through life changes, whether it be a divorce, a job change, a, a contemplating a move, adopting a child, um, dealing with the loss of a loved one or huge disappointment or mental illness. I feel like you run the gamut. Like you really can help people. Like that's your job is like the healing part. And he says, yeah, it's not about, he says, yeah, yes, it's not. It's not about fixing. It's not about fixing. And I have said this before, you guys, if you followed my work for the last 15 years, which is how long I've been doing psychic and medium and coaching work, 15 years, that I've always said that you are not broken. There's nothing wrong with you, but we feel like we need something, like we're missing something. And what we're really missing is the connection to ourselves and being our own best advocate, being our own best cheerleader, being our own, believing in ourselves so much that when somebody else doesn't believe in you, it doesn't really matter because it's really about them and not you. And I can say that until I'm purple in the face, but I know too, as a human, I don't always live by that myself either. But with Prince, with you in the afterlife, I mean, that's what inspires me. I think you and I have similar desires. Like we want people to be, to recognize that they don't need all this external stuff. What they need most is that internal connection to themselves, to really honor, love, and be in relationship with themselves and that the healing comes from inside of us. When we begin to like ourselves more and we treat ourselves kind and the way we treat other people, we actually are treating ourselves in private like that. 
nice and kind and encouraging and supportive and hey i know you're really after that thing up but you know what i got you i'm here for you you might need a pint of ben and jerry's or a couple of those blueberry food fritters at the bakery which seriously you guys that's my downfall oh my gosh i love them <laughs> <laughs> to get over that human part of that hump. But the truth is, is it's us. We got to be there for ourselves. It's not selfish. It's not. It's soulful and it's required. It is a mandatory class in this life called human. Okay. Prince and I have a lot in common that way. Like I, we care about that. Like, and I struggle if I care too much about what, how other people are doing. And, you know, so it's even hard to read my YouTube comments sometimes because people can feel, you can feel so much in just a few words that they say. And you're like, oh my gosh, this person really needs a pick me up, a cheerleader, some, to go pick some flowers, to go on a walk, to get out of their little apartment and just look up at the sky and go, okay, possibility. I'm breathing. Air is good. You know, even if the night before they had a horrible, experience you know I mean <sighs> so we've established that you're not Jesus but it is Easter this weekend and your at the anniversary of your death date is on Easter what kind of energy is coming open here is this like a portal like an access point is there an opportunity for healing is there an opportunity for clearing grief what is it Prince can talk to us about the significance of the third anniversary of your death please my friend He's doing this thing where he does it with his lips. And I can't do it very well right now because I have my braces in. But he does this thing where he goes. It's not much about saying. It's more about feeling. Being in solitude might be difficult for some, especially with the holiday. Prince sharing. Bridget paraphrasing, Prince sharing. Might be difficult with a holiday to find solitude. But if you can, that's going to be, quite possibly, could be the best thing for you. And if you can be outside, to be able to see what God has created. He uses the word God. He uses the term God. What he means by that in a spiritual context is God, prime creator, universe, cosmic consciousness, whatever you believe. To see what God has created, what has been present for you, what was here for you before you came to be a human and have an experience. He says, step outside and see, even if the weather's crappy, he says, even if the weather's crappy, just see just he says observe life happening around you observe it notice the the birds the wind the the sky the clouds the the grass the coloring of things around you and you will hear noise that's different than that that's not god made that's man made but everything that man has made from the the trucks moving down the highway to the trains and the tracks and the, the planes overhead are all an invention of man, mankind. The human mind has created those things because of the inspiration from the source, which is the soul, the spirit. And he's showing me that ideas come from inside your soul. They bubble up, inspire you, and give you these beautiful gifts of opportunity. And he's showing me like fireworks, so like these ideas come in to your, so to your spirit, your soul, and then like fireworks, they go off, and they're just this beautiful expression of, of kind of like a, a, what would you use for a word? Partnership between the human experience and the spirit in expression. And it's like a unity, a uniting, a harmony energy. I love that word harmony. That has come up a few times in sessions recently, harmony. And I've had the pleasure to actually speak with um, musicians and artists like musicians, singers, songwriters uh, lately, and, and even like filmmakers and things. And it's just so inspiring, Prince. It's so inspiring. He said, it absolutely, it is, it is. He says, creative people are my favorite. They're, creative people are my favorite. 
Everybody's creative though, Prince. Everybody is, right? So on this, this April 21st, which is the day, well, that's the official day of your passing. I, you and I have talked about this and I think it was actually the 22nd. About one. Yeah. Um, one, one thirty-three, one something. And he says, yeah, it's a blur. It's all a blur. Whew. He says, Bridget, you're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Not the passing, I'm not worried about the passing part. It's like the exact timing and doing that kind of stuff because some people argue and I don't really want this video to be about that. <sighs> then make it about something more beautiful. So Prince, is there life after death? What kind of life is there? Or is there just the spirit is free from the body and there's not really a life, but there's something different? Or how is that? He says, you know the answer to this. I know, I know I do. Uh, yes, I do. But explain it in this video, please, when we talk about the anniversary of your death. Yes. <laughs> yes, there is life after death. And it is, it is what you choose it to be. You can, you can come back and have a new life if you choose to do that. He says, I don't know why anybody would choose to do that. But I, even I've chosen to do that before. Prince has had other lifetimes, so I'm going to share that with you. But it's not for anybody to say. He says, it's not for anybody to say. It's for you. So when do we decide that? Like when we leave our body and our, our spirit is just free and we are in the afterlife, all of a sudden we're in this alternate level of dimension or reality or plane or whatever you want to describe it as. It's not that, you guys, it's not creepy and it's not all that weird or mystical. It's really like, kind of like air, like the sky, like the clouds. I think that's why people go heaven and they look up. It's kind of like that. It feels like that light and fluffy and you know, and what, at what point do we decide that then? What's next? He says there's no time. So it's, he says it's hard to, um, to answer that specifically, he says. That's pretty detailed. Pretty detailed. The time is not, there's no time. Everything is just now. And when you're a spirit, then there's not this, he's, he's sharing, there's not this pressure of having to do things like right now. There's all the time in the world because there's no world. It's all ex just like this eternal flow. And so there's no pressure. There's no restriction. It's just free. So are you just alone or can you explain that? No, no. He says, no, no. You, you unite and you connect with others and there is a magnetism or an uh, attractive kind of energy that you just come together as energy. And then you can, he says, you can share and express through what you would consider a mind or a divine mind or one mind where you can share and express the common understandings of what you would consider like story, like telling a story, talking to each other, relationship, that kind of a thing. There is, that does, he says, that does exist, but it's in a patterning, uh, a web of, uh, of very detailed, very complex looking, if you were to look at it, but it's just a very natural kind of flow state where you connect with others who have had and shared similar experiences to your own, such as other musicians, artists, things like that, family members, people you've shared lifetimes with, not just this one, but others. But also there's, lots of new things that you can explore, connect with, and understand. And it's this gathering of knowledge, wisdom, is the best way to describe it. And then you can choose to go into a, like a traffic pattern. It's kind of showing me like going into like a tube or something and coming into a new life experience and then you're born into life and then you have that life experience, whether you're born into um, someone in Italy or Australia or the United Kingdom or the United States or Saudi Arabia or Africa or wherever, that's just, or other dimensions, other planets, other experiences and existences because that's all possible. Okay, I didn't expect you to talk about that, but hey, I'm honoring you, Prince, you know? 
your three years in human context in the afterlife, does it feel like you just got there? Or does it feel like you've been there forever? He says, both. At times I feel really new. Everything's exciting and new, it feels new. And at times it feels like it's just always been like this. So talk about feeling as a spirit. Do you have, a, do you have feeling, emotion? It's not the same. It's sensory. How you sense things in your body, how you feel hot and cold and, and get the chills and shivers and that kind of thing. He's showing me. But it's different. It's not, it doesn't derail you. It doesn't distract you. It only adds to the experience. It only enhances the learning. It only enhances the experience that is all in a common, it's like a common goal kind of a thing. It's in a common a state of sharing and awareness is what he's describing. It's really beautiful, you guys. It's hard to articulate this in words. This is very advanced. I hope you guys here at Above Life Channel really appreciate this and really like this. For some of you, this is gonna to seem too out there and that's totally fine. But my job is to really be authentic and show and share what the spirit is sharing and try to check my own beliefs somewhat. I can't always do that. I'm a human being for crying out loud. Of course, my own biases show up, but I'll do my best to share what it is that you're sharing. He says, and I thank you. He's like, I thank you for that, Bridget. I thank you. I know. Thank you. You don't call me Bridget very often. Every once in a while, when you're like usually hollering at me, Bridget, <laughs> you're hollering at me to get the attention. <laughs> it's funny, but it's true, you guys. It's kind of a funny kind of comic uh, connection <laughs> we have. Mm. So, oh, people would want to know this, Prince. So how is it that you can have a personality like you and I can have a relationship that's funny and playful that you're a kind of a spirit guide you're a spirit friend let's say that he says yeah guide isn't a good term Bridget because you don't listen I know I don't listen it's clear people I am not good with the clear audience hello I do not listen he's like well you don't you don't take advice anyway I'm like I don't I don't that's just that's yeah, true I, I accept it I love myself anyway I love myself because that's who I am. <laughs> but how, can you explain Prince, how you and I can have these kind of conversations and banter and kind of silliness where if you're not a person, like you don't have a body, you don't have a brain. Oh, I'm sorry, that's kind of offensive. You have a divine mind. You don't have your own individual unique mind. And then you, but you don't have like, you know, like how are you a personality? How do you have characteristics? I mean, you're dead. You're, that means your body isn't even alive. So how can you even identify with your body? Hello, explain that to people. People are gonna wanna know this. <laughs> I mean, I kinda know this, I just accept it. I'm like, this is just the way it works and that's fine. I don't, I don't ask 5,000 questions. I probably did 15 years ago when I first like became psychic, but now I don't really, I'm like, eh, it is, it just is. <laughs> so can you explain that to people, hmm? It is how you perceive it to be, he says as it is with the afterlife. For some, there's going to be a heaven. For others, there's going to be a state of sleep. It is how you believe it to be. And so it will be however you need it to be. It is really based on that. And he says for Bridget, she needs uh, interpersonal connection and communication. So I bring forward the energy of a structure of my human life and we talk through that lens or through that channel. Perfect, beautiful, Mwah. perfect, perfect description. All right, you guys, so there you go. There you are. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. The purpose here has been to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope because this is your life. This is your life, so live it. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation with Prince in the afterlife. Thank you so much for watching.